One of the Nazi goals was to dehumanize the Jews, to make them feel helpless and hopeless. Despite the degradations that many experienced, Jews often chose to resist in a variety of ways. For some, resistance meant retaining a sort of normalcy in defiance of Nazi regulations. The Warsaw Ghetto had numerous underground newspapers. Cultural life continued in places like Theresienstadt and Ludz in the form of concerts and plays. For others, resistance meant maintaining one's integrity in the face of Nazi demands. Janusz Korczak was a celebrity, a sort of Mr. Rogers of his day. He was the director of an orphanage in Warsaw. When the Nazis required that the Jewish orphans be moved into the ghetto, and later when they were deported, Korczak insisted on staying with the children, even though he himself was offered an opportunity to escape. Instead, he marched with the children to the gas chambers of Treblinka in August 1942. It would be a myth to think that Jews went like sheep to the slaughter. In fact, this phrase was used by Abba Kovner, a resistance fighter, to encourage others to join him in the fight. There were many uprisings and numerous acts of sabotage in many ghettos and camps. The best known is the Warsaw Ghetto Uprising, which began in April 1943. The Germans intended on liquidating the ghetto in three days, but the Jews, armed with just a few weapons, Molotov cocktails, and bricks, managed to hold off the army for nearly 30 days. Although they knew victory was hopeless, the Jews were determined to fight. This was about dying with dignity. In the end, the survivors were marched out of the ghetto. Those that were captured were gassed and the ghetto was burned to the ground. There were many instances where Jews were rescued from Nazi hands. All involved great risk and demanded intense planning and a lot of luck. There are examples of countries resisting Nazi demands to save their Jewish population. Denmark was occupied in 1940 by Germany. It was the only occupied country that managed to save most of its Jews. This was due in large part to a number of fortunate circumstances. First, in 1943, a Nazi official tipped off the Danish government of an imminent roundup. The Jewish leaders were notified in turn. Meanwhile, nearby Sweden, which was neutral, had agreed to grant asylum to the Jews. With the help of the Danish people, all but 464 of the 9,000 Danish Jews financed their escape to Sweden by fishing boat. Those 464 were sent to Theresienstadt. However, all but 51 who perished in the camp were eventually released to Sweden due to the efforts of the Danish king, Christian X. There were those who used their position to save large numbers of Jews. Raoul Wallenberg was sent by Sweden as a diplomat to Budapest, Hungary in July 1944. With the financial aid of the American War Refugee Board, Wallenberg handed out passes providing Swedish protection and housing to over 35,000 Jews. He could often be seen, as in this picture, distributing the passes to Jews while they were standing in deportation lines. Then there were also those who acted as individuals at great risk to themselves and to their families to save Jews. The Yazinski family of Poland hid five Jewish boys on their farm between 1941 and 1942. When the Nazis became suspicious that they were hiding Jews, their farm was confiscated and the entire Yazinski family was sent to a slave labor camp. The five boys managed to escape to the woods, but unfortunately, only one survived the Holocaust. After the war, a Yazinski daughter, Amelia, settled in St. Louis. She was awarded the Israeli Medal of Honor on behalf of her family's sacrifice, and she is pictured here being honored by the St. Louis Jewish community. Those who chose to help often did so because they simply felt it was the right thing to do in the face of Nazi evil.